Okay, we've been talking about bringing our major scales to life, having them sound like we're not just repeating a scale, but we're finding melodies. We're using the scale as a field of notes to make melodies. We've also been talking about um, uh, playing the scales in a rhythmic way that will establish a connection with the drummer. Uh, combining a couple of different things into one uh, sausage is something that I try to do in my practicing as much as possible. Not just work on one thing, but but do it so that I'm I'm exploring some different concepts and getting better at a couple of different things all at the same time. So this exercise is something I've used for years to help to warm up my fingers, uh, my articulation, my sense of rhythm, and my mind uh, imagining playing through a set of changes all at once. So the exercise sounds like this. Pretty simple, but there's a few things going on. One is that I'm tonguing the first note of every measure and the second note of every measure, and then I'm tonguing every upbeat after that. So uh, if I use syllables to talk about that, that sounds like ta. So one, two, three, four. Ta ta ha ta ha ta ha ta 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 ha ta 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 ha ta ha ta ha ta 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 ha ta ha ta ha ta ta. So that's giving me some forward motion, some propulsion in my line. I'm tonguing the first note of every bar in order to mark my passage into that bar. So I'm I'm noticing that I'm entering a bar. I'm doing that with my tongue. Then I tongue the second note to start the series of all the up upbeats, and I tongue every upbeat. So, having heard that, uh, watch how I play uh, four bars of music, and I'm going to tongue the first eighth note of each bar, and then all the upbeats afterwards. One, two, one, two, with the hi-hat, uh, with the drummer on the hi-hat, the drummer playing the hi-hat on two and four. Okay, and then the, the last thing that I'm doing is I'm imagining myself playing over a set of changes uh, so that I'm, I'm practicing for my mind to deliver, my intellectual side, to deliver the changes as they come up. And, and ideally, ideally, I can also see them come up in advance. So the changes are C major, I'm talking in a my key. Uh, so I'm playing in concert B flat right now. In my key it's C major, two, three, four, D minor, G7, C major, three, four, D minor, G7, C major. So I'm trying to see those chords, see that that's what I'm doing as I play through the, the exercise. One, two, three. That was pretty good. I was pretty clear all the way through. That's something you have to work on to, 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 to uh, get established. It's easy to just play the sound without adding in the, the component of knowing what changes you're playing through. And in this particular case, we're, we're starting on one of a C major chord, and that carries us with a perfect eighth, eighth note line that lands us on one of the D minor chord. And then at the top, we, we start on the note E, which is the third of a C major scale. Also lands us on uh, the one D of D minor, and the one of G, G7 to get us home to C. Okay, and, and I, uh, I have run this exercise through all the keys. Uh, and as I get up high on my horn, I try to slow down so that I can play it, um, so that I can play it without hesitation. If I practice playing it uh, too fast for myself, then I'm practicing to make a mistake. I'm, you know, I'm practicing to play it wrong. So I slow down to a point where I think I can play it that will continue to be uh, effortless and, and swinging. I'll play one in. Uh, I'll play one in the key of F, 
Uh, maybe I'll work my way up to F. Just so you can see how I do this, in, uh, you know, as a as a warm up exercise. <laughs> myself improvise a little bit with it. I, of course, played it until I could do it very precisely. Uh, once again, if you need to slow down, slow down so that you're practicing to play smooth, especially if you're practicing the, the, uh, the, uh, the high register of the saxophone. Uh, slow it down so that you can play smoothly enough up there that you don't, you don't sound like you're making a break or hesitating. Slow down. And, and don't push it. If you do this over six months, by the end of six months, if you've practiced it smoothly every day, you'll sound smooth, and the the tempo will come. You don't have to you don't have to try to get it real fast today. Get it relaxed and swinging today, and tomorrow it'll be relaxed and swinging a little bit faster. Okay. So remember, you're warming up your your fingers. You're warming up your, your feeling of time, forward propulsion, and you're also thinking about the changes as you're feeding, you're feeding, your mind is feeding the changes in, in time. So you're practicing to know that the changes are falling in time, okay? Another way I practice that, by the way, is uh, if I'm learning a tune and the changes are, uh, uh, say, these changes, what we've just been doing, uh, I'll just name the changes in time. One, two, three, four. C major, mm. D minor, G7, C major, D minor, G7, C major. So that's easy. I've been doing that for years. I can do that without hesitation. Maybe I'll try putting in some substitutions, see if I can, see if I can do that in time. C minor, D, ooh. It was C major, not C minor. C major, <clears throat> D minor, G7, C major, D minor, D flat 7, C major, for example. There's a tritone substitution, so I've played it in time, uh, and that's a way that I practice to see if I, can, uh, see if I can deliver the changes in time as I cross the bar lines. C major. E flat, A flat, D minor, G7, C major. E flat, A flat, D flat, and C. <laughs> C minor, I'm still in it. C major, that was D, G, C. D minor, G, C. E flat, A flat, D, G, C. F sharp, just for fun, C. C sharp, F sharp, C. I'm just trying some stuff. That's, that's the way I do it when I'm improvising also. I'll try to just pick something, see if I can play it, and find my way back home. Uh, I think Herbie Hancock is the, is the absolute master of saying, well, I'm going to try this sound, and, and well, that could lead me over here, and that could lead me there, and then, well, yeah, now we better go home. He's, he's an amazing, he's, an, he's mastered the ability to, to go where he's hearing or where he wants to try 
and hear his way out. Uh, so you can practice that. Uh, this, this naming of the changes uh, is a way to practice that. Uh, and as I made mistakes, in this last example where I was trying to name some things, as I made mistakes, what I tried to do was keep the time in place and, uh, and continue in time and try to land myself back at home at C major. In other words, when you're on the bandstand, if you go C major, D minor, um, uh, sorry guys, can we do that again? C major, you don't get to do that when you're on the bandstand in front of, in front of an audience. So I try to practice with that same kind of intensity when I'm trying something at home. C major, D minor, D flat, C, A flat, D flat, C. And if I make a mistake, I try to keep where I am, C, in the D minor, G, C. I try to always stay in time, uh, and you know, if I fall apart, then I have to start over and try it again. But I try to stay in time and make the correction to the mistake in time so that I practice getting good at correcting my mistakes in time. Okay? Uh, feel free to use that exercise. It's a good one to take through all the keys. Helps you build flexibility in all the keys. Helps get your, your mind active understanding uh, one, two, five, one in all the keys. It's good to, good to get that grouped in. Okay?